Greetings, everyone. Amy Cunningham again. This is our fifth video in the video series, and we're so lucky. We have Laura Lister Mensch with us today. Laura is coming to us from the US, where she's like most of us under lockdown. She is the executive director of Feast. She's an American writer. She became an activist for improved eating disorder treatment after her teenage daughter recovered from life threatening eating disorders a life-threatening eating disorder, rather. And her book, Eating With Your Anorexic, is a humorous memoir of her family's experience. I've read it, it's great, go out and buy it. <laughs> Laura is an affiliate member of the Academy for Eating Disorders, a recipient of the 2014 Meehan Hartley Award for Public Service and Advocacy. And she's also helped found three eating disorder advocacy organizations. One is Feast, another Charlotte's Helix, and the Moudsley Parents. So she's really got a lot of advocacy around the pa for parents under her belt. She's written four books, two on eating disorders, and she also tap dances and watches very, very old movies. And That's just me. a little personal, as we know, there's a strong genetic connection with eating disorders. Laura and I found out that we are actually fourth cousins. We learned that through DNA and all of those um, online services. Uh, my mom is an am uh, amateur genealogist. And so I guess it really does run in the genes. The advocacy. <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> Laura, I see right behind you the Feast of Knowledge Sydney 2020. So first I want to ask you, I want to get to that and spend some time on it. But first I want to ask you, how did you get involved and why was this so important to get involved in av advocacy? I'm kind of feeling like I'm on the, um, I'm the old I'm the old school now because I've been at this for um, over 15 years and it was for the usual reason that people get into advocacy is that our daughter got ill. Um, after she recovered, I'm like, what happened to us? And being a writer, I wrote. So I wrote a book about it. Um, the book, I thought, get that out. McGraw-Hill published it. I'll give it a year and then I'll go back to my normal life. I've never gone back to my normal life. <laughs> It just, there was need, there was need to do this. And I find it uh, intellectually and personally satisfying to try to improve the situation for families. So, what, what is the biggest challenge you think that parents face in the, in the current environment? That we are surrounded uh, by a community, uh, a culture and professionals who do not have recent, recent training in eating disorders and uh, that, they, they kind of face chaos in how to respond and mm -hmm. often uh, don't get the right information the first, second, or fifth time. And we don't have time to waste when we're intervening with our kids. If you don't intervene well early, your chances get harder, you know, it gets harder. So I find it very frustrating that, you know, getting an eating disorder diagnosis doesn't immediately trigger evidence-based information for families, mm -hmm. but it doesn't. And that's the most important thing. We've talked to a couple of clinicians the last few days, and um, folks were unanimous in saying that uh, clinicians across the board, whether they're social workers or medical doctors or nurses, are not getting enough training before they go out to start their practices. That's I right. Love that. That's right. And they're not getting that training. They are getting training, but mm -hmm. the training is often outdated or myth-based or you know, is, is so narrow and small that they feel like they can treat eating disorders and they really don't have the breadth of knowledge that they need. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that providers have all the information, the training, and the collaboration that they need to intervene for us and get us information. Also, our, our culture is really ignorant about mental illness broadly and eating disorders specifically. Really ignorant. Yes. And we haven't fixed that. And that's another thing we have to do. So getting straight to feast of knowledge, you're really alluding to the, re the need for knowledge, the need for correct knowledge. Talk, talk a little bit about what feast of knowledge is, how it's working, how it was founded, and what you expect to accomplish. Feast of knowledge is, this year is our third annual event. We've had other events um, in, in lots of places, but uh, we kind of hit on the idea and it was actually uh, J.D. Ouellette's um, idea of how we would structure this first is sort of a, um, you know, you learn and then you learn one, teach one. Um, we knew that there would be a lot of people going to the International Conference on Eating Disorders, 
that is put on every year by the Academy for Eating Disorders. So we decided the day after that, we would invite as many of those people as we could grab, uh, because we'd all be in the same city, mm -hmm. um, to come to our event and give kind of a small bit of their the taste of, of the ICED conference at our event. Um, but the audience would be families because families can't go to a three day, extremely expensive conference. We, a lot of us would like to, but that's expensive. Um, and you know, who has the time? So now we have this one day event. We held one in Chicago, we held one in New York. We were supposed to have one in Sydney. Uh, I was supposed to leave for Sydney this week, but of course COVID came along. So we are very, very able to adapt. We're very tech savvy and we immediately switched to a virtual conference. And so the conference that we're gonna hold this year is even more accessible to families. Uh, it's, you know, it's a, we're still holding it in Sydney time so it will be kind of under, I'll be backwards in my time. I'm staying up all night for two nights. Uh, but I think that what we're going to be able to do is actually allow families around the world to get a taste of iced and a taste of, of you know, 2020 eating disorder, you know, like put a, put a pin in 2020. What do we know about eating disorders on a, on a number of things? So we're actually going to run 13 hours straight of content. Uh, it will be on demand so that people can drop in whenever and they can also watch it afterwards. So your ticket gets you a lot of access. But if you're there during the live parts, there'll be four hours of live stuff early in the day in Sydney, mm -hmm. uh, four hours, and that'll be the evening in the United States, you know, the Americas. Uh, there'll be four hours of content in late in the day in Sydney, which is more comfortable for the Europeans. And you can interact live. So it's, we're using a Zoom platform. You will be able to ask questions. Um, you will be able to interact to some degree. We'll have a little bit of social time where lot, you know, larger groups of people can, you know, comment and interact and see each other's live. No, we're all in the same room. Um, and then we're running a bunch of pre-recorded stuff as well. And all will be available to ticket holders. Um, this isn't well known, I think, but we actually publish all of our conferences since 2011 online. So you can go watch the 2011, the 2012, the 2014. You can watch conferences from all over the world on our site. I think people don't realize that there's that much wonderful content for families out there, mm -hmm. but this will eventually become content that will be free and available to the public after we've um, Bitten, brought it down into chunks and published it so that it's easier to, for people to access topic by topic. Mm -hmm. But on June 13th, 14th, you know, overnight the 13th into the 14th, mm -hmm. uh, you will be able to experience in real time as much of or as little of what you would like from this event. And there are programs online. People can say, oh, I'm really interested in pregnancy and eating disorders. I'm really interested in why is food medicine? Um, I'd really like to see Janet Treasure's, you know, animal analogies. I could go on all day. I'm doing a session on distress tolerance uh, that I'm really excited about. We've got, you know, a haze uh, session. A lot of really good stuff's going to go on that you can access. And we like making things available to the public that they couldn't otherwise get. And this is all about access. That's fabulous. So it starts on June 13th. And runs through the 14th. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the 14th in Sydney the whole day. Um, and we really wanted to honor that that this was, you know, Sydney time. Mm -hmm. But um, in, you know, in my time zone, I'm on the East Coast of the United States, as are you, we will be, um, you know, it'll start in the afternoon, late afternoon for us, and we'll run through the night. And so if you're not a night owl or you, or you want to catch up on the, you know, the hours that you've missed, you'll still be able to go back and do that. And we feel it's really important that people get access to the whole thing as they need it. And caregivers and, and families don't have time right. to, to, you know, they have to often do things in bites. And we want to, we always focus on what do parents need. That's what we're doing. Okay. That sounds great. And um, I've signed up myself. Um, <laughs> And Great. I know it's quite affordable as well. Um, I know it might be a little bit out of the reach, though, of some people. So I know you also have some scholarships available. I have never understood how this happens. But every year we offer that people can donate money for scholarships for others. And we always get exactly as many 
requests for free tickets, scholarship tickets. No questions asked, by the way. If you need it, you ask for it, you get it. Um, for caregivers only. Um, and we always get donations that cover it. And I'm not a, you know, I'm not into the woo-woo, but I will say the generosity, because we're talking dozens and dozens of tickets are given to, by other people who were able to give a little more or give a lot more to enable other families. And it just feels very community-minded to me That's that, the, that people who need to get it can get it and people who are able to help offer it. And it just comes together. And that's very feast to me. Remind me how much the tickets are. Are they $50 each? It's 50 US. Okay. And that gets you a whole day, 12 hours of content. 13. Great. 13 <laughs> hours of content and lots yes. of free information for parents, for caregivers, for family members, um, addressing eating disorders, or maybe in the past. I think sometimes folks need to make sense of what happened. Um, these can be very traumatic situations. You make a really good point. So when I say caregivers, I don't mean that you have to be a caregiver right now. Um, and also I need to make sure that people understand that we're not talking about parents of children. When we say my child, you know, I have a 33 year old, mm -hmm. she's my child. Um, I don't mean to infantilize her. I just mean, we don't have a word in English for adult children, mm -hmm. um, of which we have. Um, but I believe that being literate and understanding eating disorders and being a good advocate, being a good community member means learning a lot. There's so much to learn. I learn more every day. So we're, when, when I say caregivers, I just mean that the free tickets are for people who have been in or mm -hmm. are in a role with a loved one who is, you know, they're responsible for. I do not mean you have to, you know, be actively caring for somebody. We have a lot of our community uh, is not in active caregiving world, but they want to understand eating disorders so they can be better advocates and better support, peer supports for others. There's... It's um, it's a it's an intellectually interesting field because things change, and improve and grow, and it's cross uh, discipline. So you get to learn a lot about biology and psychology, psychiatry, nutrition, family life. You know, there's just a great deal to learn and know and understand. And each of us who are out there, um, we can kind of look at it as kind of a um a way to make the world safer for families is if your neighbor and your coach and, you know, the lady down the street and the, you know, woman in your synagogue, if everybody knows a little bit more about eating disorders, the world's a little safer. And so I just think anyone should, should learn as much as they can. And Feast of Knowledge is one of the ways that we're making that possible. And also, I, I imagine that um, um, healthcare workers are also welcome. Very welcome. Um, we find that routinely 20, 30% of the people who attend our conferences are treatment providers or professionals who, who support people and families. We are, we've always been very pleased about that. Um, the content is for beginners. It's not, you know, it, it's not inaccessible, but it also is not talking down to anyone. Um, we, we believe that community members and family members are professionals. We are peers. And just as a nutritionist and a therapist might not have the same training and knowledge, they find ways to talk to each other without talking down to each other. Parents are part of that team. They are equals to the, the professionals. In, 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 that's the way FEAST operates. And so but when a parent comes to the table, a dietitian comes to the table, a psychiatrist, a doctor, we expect them to be colleagues with all the rest including families. And we're just about at time, but I wanted to ask one more question. Um, is, I, I understand that FEAST is a global entity. Um, could you speak a little bit about bringing on board parents and, and caregivers and people generationally who have been uh, dealing with eating disorders um, and professionals, et cetera, from across the globe? Thank you so much for bringing that up because one of the interesting things about what we do is that staying global is actually not easy. Um, it means that we need to be sensitive to the needs and language uh, and culture and a differing attitude about volunteering and, and international behavior 
than another organization, but we think it's worth it because the eating disorder does not care where you live and it does not care what language you speak. It's the same, it's the same challenges, the same diagnoses, the same need for families to be involved, but we are also crowdsourcing. So everything we do depends on families stepping up to volunteer, to translate, to get involved, to promote. We don't have buckets of money. We only take donations from uh, individuals. Um, we, we, we're not funded by some big something out there. It's if you are helped by this and you need need this, you know, we're those are the people we're putting together. People who need it and people who are willing to help out. And we have amazing volunteers and 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 donors who are just, you know, like you and me, who, you know, give a dollar here, give a yen there. We make this work, you know. I, I think we're an amazingly adaptable responsive organization for that reason but also uh we operate from our laundry room uh i'm not really in sydney i'm in my laundry room so well and it's really from the heart and i um i have no biases except that laura is my fourth cousin so I <laughs> but we only found that out a little while ago um highly highly recommend folks get on the facebook page get on the website um lots and lots of information for parents for individuals suffering for clinicians I'm going to Feast of Knowledge. I hope others join. We'll put all that contact information in the link. And Laura, it's so nice to see your smiling face. Any last words that you'd like to leave us with for World Eating Disorders Day 2020? You know, a year ago, you and I were literally together for World Eating Disorder Day. We were. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so that was really amazing to do that. And, and you know, I have the benefit of having had a personal, you know, uh, someone I know who's involved and we were in the same room, but I've just got to say, I'm looking forward to once again, the beautiful grassroots, you know, energy of World Eating Disorder Day, um, Action Day, where all, we're, we're all pulling together not to make, you know, not to, not to fundraise and not to press any particular thing on anyone, but it's collaborative, it's international, it's it's a beautiful beautiful thing and for me as a parent advocate to see how many parents have been involved with this um it just make, gives me optimism and gives me energy for the rest of the year so thank you for what you do every year you're most welcome and thank you for everything you do you're my hero one of my heroes and i love your purple outfit <laughs> um it's um i don't know if you it can tell but it's helixes it's it um, is. And these I are double I really wanted to talk to you about Charlotte's Helix, but we'll have to do that another time. Next time. <laughs> Next time. Laura, thank you so much. Take good care. And you we'll too. see you on June 2nd. Thank you so much.